guys, it's Dr. McGlass, and I hope everybody is doing well and staying healthy. I'm um, in my office on the ghost town that is now campus. And unfortunately, today was going to be one of our most fun classes for the semester. I was going to do a live reenactment of the uh, cookie activity that I talked about in video 17. So what I'm going to have you do, I'm kind of adapting it, because normally what I would have you guys do is you would come into class, I would put you in groups, somebody would be your consumer, um, they would consume actually chocolate chip cookies in the case of class, and then um, record the data, put some graphs up on the board, and compare them and see if we can figure out what the common thread was in people's behavior. So instead, I'm going to try something different so that you can try this at home. You're going to do this on your own, and it's a 10 point assignment, but you know, things being what they are, it's going to be a pretty easy 10 point assignment. So, what I want you to do is each of you at home is going to pick something that's going to be your consumable good. Uh, usually in class I use chocolate chip cookies, but pick anything that you want as long as the thing that you're picking is equal successive units. So, you know, it could be cookies, but you could use pizza, you could use sushi, you could use pieces of fruit, you could use whatever it is that you happen to have at home that you could consume multiple units of and record data on it. What I need you to remember though is for the purposes of the experiment, while you are in consumer mode, uh, the theory in the book says that you are consuming identical successive units of the same thing. So while you're in that consumer mode until you say, okay, I'm done, you only get to consume that one thing, whatever the thing is that you've chosen. So like when I do this in class with chocolate chip cookies, I don't let students take a drink. They have to to just consume cookies until they decide they're done. And when they say, okay, I'm finished with the experiment, then they can go have a drink. If you have the drink during the experiment, it actually spikes the data and messes up your graph. So while you're doing this, choose whatever consumer good you wish. I'm going to refer to it just generically as cookies in the handout. You can substitute whatever it is you actually decide to consume. So you begin consumption, give each one a rating like I talked about in the video 17. If it was, you know, a top rating, you give it a nine or a 10. If it was just sort of a filler, you know, it made you a little better off, but it wasn't awesome, then maybe it was four or five. If it did nothing for you and you are no better off after having consumed whatever it is, then it didn't add anything, you give it a zero. Um, yes, it is possible that if you consume things, sometimes you feel worse after you consume them. So you could have a negative number rating, okay? I have in the handout set up this chart for you. And notice I have the chart set up for quantities from one to 12. You do not need to consume a dozen of whatever it is that you're consuming. Uh, I just chose an arbitrary number. You can consume less. It's always important that the consumers stop when they are ready to stop. If it's more than 12 units, because in class I've had people consume more than 12 chocolate chip cookies in a row, uh, just add the data to your table, okay? On the back, on the second page, this is where you graph out your numbers. So you're going to have your, so actually I should change this. It still refers to group members, construct. So construct a graph based on the table that you have when you're putting your quantity consumed of whatever it is on the horizontal axis. You are putting your amount added to well-being on the vertical axis um, and graph that out for me. Okay, then you're going to answer these questions as you consume more of whatever it was, what happened to your amount added to well-being, and that's what's showing up in your graph. At what point did that amount added begin to decline? And that'll vary from consumer to consumer, so just answer it for yourself. Um, and then consider the following, if you had to eat one more unit, and so I mean at the point that you stopped and you said, no, I don't want any more, if somebody had forced you to have another one, what kind of a rating would you have given it? Uh, and then I want you to put that hypothetical point on your table. Number four says add one more column to the table labeled total well-being. What happened to your total sense of well-being? So back here, if you said item number one gave you 10 units and item number two gave you eight, that means that your total well-being would be 10 units after the first one and 10 plus eight or 18 units after the second one. Okay, so whatever your numbers are, you're just taking a running total in the third column and then watching what happens to those numbers, what happens to that total sense of well-being, that third column as more of whatever it is, I should be careful here, more cookies are consumed, but it could be anything. And then at what 
point did the total sense of well-being begin to decline? Um, so that third column, does it ever drop? If you don't see it drop, when do you think it would have dropped? What's the quantity at which it would have dropped for you? Okay, so that's your 10 point assignment. What you need to do in order to get the 10 points so that I can see it is, I'm gonna hop over to Canvas here for a second. You're gonna go into Canvas. In the modules, I have set up in the section three toward the end of the consumer theory stuff, uh, what I've called the at-home consumer experiment. Uh, I will have here, I will include the handout here. I haven't done that yet because I'm still polishing it up, but by the time you see it, it'll be here. In this video, it's going to be embedded. You are going to go into this discussion board and just reply to my prompt. So in your reply, the only thing I need from you is, hey, Dr. McGlasson, you know, here's my graph. So I need a picture of your graph and your answers. So I did that on my phone. I I invented some numbers and completed a graph. I didn't answer the questions because I want you guys to answer the questions for yourselves. But what you're going to do is just take a picture of the second page of the handout and post it here. That's all. You don't have to, you know, give multiple posts. You don't have to be responding to other people's posts. You certainly can if you want to. You're welcome to comment on other people's things and ask them questions if you want. But all I really wanted was to see a picture of everybody's assignments here. Uh, most importantly, because I want people to be able to look at everyone's graphs, kind of scroll through and say, all right, what's, what's the common element in all of these graphs? Uh, so that's it. That's going to be your assignment. You're going to post the second page of the handout to this discussion board. Tell me what it was you chose to consume and that's all you need to do for me. But we're kind of playing it by ear for this next few weeks so we'll see how it works out. So I will be uh, pretty generous with your points this week as long as you make sure that you get this submitted with the graph, have it labeled, and have the answers. Okay. Um, so hopefully like I said, everybody's doing well, and um, I'm going to kind of continue to play it week to week because I'm not sure where we're going with this. But for this week, you're going to complete this at-home experiment. I have um, some consumer theory review questions for you for quiz number three, which is due next week. And apart from that, you know, make sure that you keep an eye on the announcements.